Uh, okay, so uh, that's thank you again for the presentation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see the title. Uh, I will mention why it's not trivial to consider such investigation uh, such by linear forms uh, in characteristic two. Well, you will see the result. Uh, it's a joint work with a bunch of people across the world. Here is a, a fragment from the last year, uh, where the results results uh, uh, written. So it's a sequel for this paper, where we considered different bilinear forms on usually some deformations of simple uh, least super algebras and uh, the algebras in positive characteristic, except two. And yeah. So, uh, a bit of notation, super dimension. Uh, I will denote a uh, dimension of even part uh, by this symbol, or part by this guy. Dimension will be just uh, some of the dimension, and let me recall you that uh, the super vector space is just Z2 graded vector space. But uh, from now on, you assume that your vector space is defined over a field of correct structure. Uh, not yet. I will, I will mention because sometimes I will jump, jump back and forth. And yeah, my idea for on the vector space that is invariant with respect to action of some algebra or a group, which is symmetric and bilinear uh, and non degenerate, will be called Mises. Uh, and if they just invariant and symmetric, then they will call Mises. Just a community. Uh, this is an uh, abbreviation. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And N for non digits. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the most important thing in the whole super science is a sign rule. So if something moves past uh, uh, something with a priority P, uh, then you should put a sign. So it's classic, so I just re remind you, and there's a lot of things could be de derived from this. Uh, so uh, we will consider only even more reasons, and uh, there's a, big, uh, a little dictionary about what is Q, what is anti, and then the Q anti. So anti, when we have some minus, uh, so super community means a community example sign with respect to sign rule, anti community when we have minus. And skew means to uh, consider shift of the parity. And yeah, uh, from now on, all super cumulative super algebras are supposed to have a unit, and uh, all morphisms will send unit to unit and preserve parity. And now I want to define what is a yeah. What is a least of algebras? I will do first it a bit naively and time permitting in the end I will use some categorical uh, theoretical tools to give a proper definition, but yeah, let's start with some naive definition. So a least of algebra for any characteristic zero or greater or zero is a super vector space such that um, the even part is just the algebra. The old part is a uh, module over uh, even part, uh, and uh, we define a bracket uh, only by anticipation if we act from the left. And then I need some additional data to construct a bracket on it. And uh, in this approach, I will use not only the bracket, but also so called squaring. Squaring uh, comes from the following fact. If you have uh, some old element uh, in your list of algebra and take, uh, and for example, you consider some matrix algebra and take a bracket of this element with itself. So then this, uh, this commutator will be equal to 2x squared, right? So a uh, commutator is, uh, if you take a half of this commutator, we will obtain square of this commutator. So this is a, why we call it squaring. So it's some operation on uh, our e o o part, and it's defined by some linear map, linear map, as it goes from this symmetric square of uh, my uh, even part, the odd part to the o, to the even part, and uh, the bracket and squaring defined in the following terms. 
Perfect. So now uh, we have a bracket on the whole uh, linear algebra. Let's discuss uh, Jacobian methods. Uh, yeah. One of the good sides of this approach is that the following statements comes from a linearity of S immediately. So the square can be hidden nicely with respect to multiplication by its ground field, and the bracket is what you expect today. Okay, so uh, the Jacobi identity involving two odd elements will look like this. You can just write your favorite Jacobi identity, put signs with respect to sign rule, plug into all the elements in one, uh, even, and then you obtain these forms. Now, if uh, geodesic is not equal to two and three, it will be uh, the same as, as, as I said, uh, as a classical Jacobi identity for all even uh, for all elements. But uh, uh, seven is uh, also all from six. If I will plug x equal to y equal to z, and then I will obtain this expression. But uh, because I have a six here, if my characteristic is equal to two or three, uh, this condition will be slight topologically. Uh, so I should have uh, some additional restrictions in this case, and solution for it to directly apply in this condition. And uh, it's not just for fun or sense of community. It's one of the reasons uh, why, uh, because you want to have a, a comparable of bit theorem or universal invalid in algebra. And if you don't apply uh, condition six in characteristic to three, then you will not have this theorem. Now let's see uh, what's happening with church safety to three. So we observe that these conditions should be added. Uh, if you have a uh, uh, if our characteristic is equal to three and uh, we want to have a point carry coffee serum. Uh, if this, if you have some uh, bracket that satisfy all Jacobian identities that I discussed before, but not uh, eight, uh, such guys called press of the algebras. Uh, in statistics, too, everything becomes a bit more tricky, so we should impose that uh, square of even elements uh, will be zero. Again, for a sake of voluntary uh, Birkhoff theorem. And uh, yeah, without such restrictions, uh, such guys would call Leibniz. And the last moment, the last subtlety, if we are working over field uh, of the two, then condition six uh, should be required by the four way. Uh, condition. Let me show why Z2 is uh, so spe special because by, by some example. So let us consider some super algebra over the field of, uh, not even over the field, over the two. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's constructed as well. So even part just commutative of the algebra. Uh, all parts is a is module with a following multiplication table, and uh, squaring is given by the following form. And let's try to plug uh, this data into our uh, formula. So, for uh, Jacobi identity is six, it will give us a following formula, but uh, since we are uh, working over Z2, uh, this expression will be equal to zero. Easy computations because uh, our old guys here are just the But if you will check condition nine, as I say, it was uh, on the last slide, especially for the uh, it will be not the same. Okay, now 
Uh, we know what is uh, this of our algebra finally naively, so we have a strange list of Jacobi identities, but I would assure you that they chosen to give you a nice object for that. Okay, so, so what is the universal developing for this example? So it will have a copy of polynomial algebra on two variables, right? And yes, and uh, that's something else. Well, it, it will be not even, it, it is limited, yes. And plus, uh, it will be exterior algebra in this case. Because they even, as they all, so. And yeah, you square as square as this, uh, we know that you'll be here. So that will square to zero, uh, x will be square to a, and y will be square to So that is a uh, concept because the daily algebra is simply algebra, it's a uh, uh, one part is a little zero, yeah, so yeah. that is an extension of the part of the partial plus time, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, so nice little example. Um, <laughs> Uh, now uh, I want to discuss so what is a symmetric bilinear forms uh, and the supersetting. Just make you a taste uh, how it's look like. So a bit of a linear algebra class. So consider some uh, vector space and the super endomorphism is divided into two parts. So one bit. Uh, so we will have minus of the square form. Uh, so we have all the endomorphisms, even endomorphisms. As usual, so we choose a basis in this vector space such that the first basis elements in the in the even subspace and the last basis elements in the odd subspace. Now, supercommutator, of course, defined in the following manner. So we just respect the cycle and uh, super trace is defined in the following way. Note that. Uh, you should take as a difference of the traces of A and D. No. This contrast is a classical trace. And uh, if you consider all endomorphisms and uh, take the guys that have a zero super trace, then you'll get a, a super war, a super version of a special linear uh, algebra. The super trace is still cyclic, just like the regular. Yeah, yeah. It's also related to Viridian. Um, you have a notion of uh, super determinant. It, it, it's a bit tricky, but yeah, they, they have the same trace. I mean, you should take uh, it will be okay. Perfect. It will be some it, it, it's it will be some rational function in determinants of this case. So the standard formula connecting determinants and traces of and yeah, so exponential yeah. still powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. it is. Okay, uh, now uh, the funny fact that you generally have not only one separation of a classical object, but several of them. So for general linear algebra, there's at least two. Uh, the direct one uh, that I described before and the clarification, the query uh, is for algebra. Uh, it's trying to answer the following way. Let me have uh, some odd uh, operator G on our vector space. So you can think about J as an odd complex structure. And we consider all guys that centralize mm -hmm. our J in the general algebra. So this gives us some subly uh, super algebra, and this uh, super algebra is called the crude uh, super algebra. And um, some generalization of it will play important role in the main result of the talk. Uh, what is interesting about that? So uh, you can describe it uh, in the following manner. If you choose your operator G of this standard form, uh, it has um, again characteristic is not two. Uh, in this case, versus zero. So on this algebra, we have a very nice trace. Which called uh, pure trace. So we just trace of B of all 
part, know that uh, if the super trace is old, uh, is even more clean, then this guy is old because it takes some guys from the uh, even part and send it to base fields. It's a, a node linear map. And the trace is guys find it gets closer. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, some basic operation is super matrices. If you have a, some linear map, we can consider a dual of it. Uh, in terms of the basis, you can write it uh, here. And then, uh, if you consider the dual map, uh, the corresponding matrix uh, will be obtained by a super transposition. And the super transposition is given in the, of the matrix is given in the whole. So note that uh, in addition to transpose, we will have some additional signs. So if your map, if your uh, linear map was odd, then you will have some additional map, uh, some additional signs here. If your original uh, map was even, then it will be just usual transposition. Okay, finally we will have. Uh, this definition of what, uh, what it means for action of uh, the other of some elements of endomorphism of our vector, so it will preserve some bilinear form. So we have some bilinear form, we have this condition, and uh, the, uh, the elements in GL of means that satisfy this condition. Uh, consider the ground of uh, matrices that preserve some bilinear form. And uh, for a given bilinear form, we can write it as a matrix in the form. Andre, in the process of two super version of GL and which is the interpretation of this different two versions? Well, the second one is uh, this three of these mm -hmm. Well, there is a third one that is super poisson in some cases, but they will not speak about. Yeah. Okay. So we know now how to do this super linear algebra. We know what this bilinear forms. We know uh, what is a linear algebra that preserves a bilinear form. We have a condition for elements of some algebra to preserve a bilinear form. Perfect. Now I will um, speak about the restricted the uh, algebras. Pasha, uh, I was speaking about this guys on months ago, right? So it's a, a notion that's uh, very useful in the positive characteristics. So we, we should have a map uh, that's called P structure, uh, which satisfies the following uh, conditions. So basically, you want uh, a P structure uh, behavior like a, a piece power of uh, the a joint action of your yeah. and it should satisfy some nice condition with respect to so multiplication based ground field and taking some And uh, when you have a uh, usually when you have a P structure such the algebra is called restricted, and uh, it is much easier, for example, to study their representations here. So the characteristic choose this S should be so there's only one S and it should not be very concrete. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so how, how restrictive is this notion of restricted? Yeah. Uh, restricted. <laughs> okay, so you, you, you have a lot of examples. For example, uh, an analysis of the vector fields uh, will be restricted for only a few cases. Because uh, well, you can extend them, add some new elements, some outer derivation. For example, as there is an analog of vector fields on the line, and uh, there is this shaping vector because you replace your um, polynomials now with divided powers. And the definition of divided powers have a some parameter. So if you are a parameter that is equal to infinity, then this guy will be understood. But if you want uh, to extend it to restricted one, you should add something that looks like a square of uh, partial infinity. 
So there is like a uh, restricted handbook. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, I speak about this. And you do the uh, restricted uh, algebra uh, respond to some algebraic groups. So it's more geometrical object. Okay. And yeah, about restricting enveloping, I will speak in a minute because uh, if my geometric is equal to two, I not only have a definition of a cleared Lisa algebra, but I could construct a uh, new uh, of algebra from a given D algebra or yeah, or even given D super algebra. So let's start with some restricted D algebra and define a new one in the following manner. So uh, my whole even part will be this guy, and my whole part will be just another copy, but I change the parity. My D algebra. Now we should define my brackets. So it's clear that the bracket on the even part will be just bracket from the original the algebra. Uh, the model structure will be defined by this formula. So it's just a generalization of a joint action. And uh, to define this query, I use uh, my two structure. So I use the fact that my initial algebra was restricted. Uh, yeah, there is some consideration that uh, if it was, uh, if it started with some simple object, then we'll end up uh, with a simple Lisa browser. It's actually a very uh, nice result because by a theorem of Boaroch, it was uh, it uh, has a following fact that there is a partial classification of simple Lisa browsers. In the following way, uh, they could be obtained by the two methods. One is called method two, and I will not discuss it here. And the first method is a uh, purification. So if you know uh, all simple restricted the algebra set of statistics to you obtain a half of um, simple least super algebras just by purification. The method two requires a bit more data, which requires some Z rating and some other stuff. So this construction is not uh, just at all, it's quite important to the classification problem. And yeah, uh, just to notice that it's consequences of these definitions. And uh, please remind, uh, remember it, we will use it later. Now, the main theory. Uh, the first part is very trivial, and you can ask undergrad to prove it. And, uh, yeah, uh, I will show you a slide to prove, but yes, it's what you expect. Is that if you have, if your heuristic is not equal to two, and you have some simple list of algebra and a dimensional one, then either you have a uh, non degenerate invariant symmetric form. Up to scale, or you don't have it. So you couldn't have a family, uh, you couldn't have the dimension is not uh, this case would be greater than two. But everything dramatically changing uh, for characteristic two because you can have either one uh, up to scalar even form, one or four, or both of them. So the space uh, become two dimensional. Which not have a here. And more important, if you have this uh, new phenomena, then you know that you can prove that your uh, simple super algebra is just a clarification of some restricted simple one. So it's some important tool how to reconcile the uh, structure of your uh, super algebra. Uh, okay. okay. Can you remind me the, the sign rules for this? Or the symmetry problems of the, the formula. Yeah, sure. I put it here. So, B is the form. Yeah. B is a form, and your grand matrix should survive as a written solution. Okay. So, but what happens when B is not itself? Is there any extra sign? Ah, uh, 
So you construct the gram matrix, and your gram matrix should be the same as supertranspose. Say again, the gram matrix should be it's the same as supertranspose. And remember that again, uh, yeah. if you four with all of them, you have six. Nice sense. Okay, but uh, uh, the, and you show the, the so that's the definition of the ground matrix. Yes. And then uh, well, what, what is and the graph of the ground matrix? Ground matrix should be equal to its super transpose. Ah, I see. Okay. 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 So B B I and J is equal to super transpose, but yeah. the definition of B I J involves the yes. Yeah. And the definition of B I J involves the science, and then because your form is all you you have a whole matrix, and then uh, when you make a super transpose, you have addition. Okay. So can can you could you say that uh, if you if you don't speak of the gram matrix, but you can speak of the form itself, mm -hmm. that when the form is odd, then um, the the comma in between the two arguments carries the the oddness of the form. Uh, so if I could say that it's front, yeah. front right. yeah. but uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't really like this interpretation, but yeah. Right. Well, I mean, if you if you multiply one of the arguments by a scalar and move the scalar to the other. Yeah, that scalar has a sign change. change. No, so scalar has a parity zero. So. Yes, but do you get the sign? No, I mean, scalar, you can not scale. Well, oh, I, uh, yes. Let's start to decide it the old scalars for now, okay. because yeah, I mean, we consider everything from the ground here. If you want yeah. to have a consider our, our some reason, yeah, uh, yes, then you will. Uh, your uh, your parity will be attached to the B sign, not to the comma. So the B uh, from okay, so from B. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Uh, this is just an emphasizing of the same theorem for statistic tools, so let's keep it. Now let's try to prove this. First, let's prove it in characteristic notebook the two, and that's what I mean by homework for undergrad. So uh, consider first a uh, homogeneous invariant form, and then and let it be non invariant, non degenerate. Then this form have a kernel. From the definition, from the condition of the uh, invariance, you see that the kernel of the form is ideal. We started from the simple object, so it's either zero or the whole uh, algebra. So this means that either uh, form is equal to zero or it's non degenerate. Problem is solved. But the same no, doesn't hold in characteristic two by the following reason. Uh, that uh, we have a big different definition of ideal in this case because our ideal in this algebra should also take care about scaling. And now, again, this is from the condition of uh, non degeneracy, you get the first condition of this needs to be ideal, but it will have nothing to do with it. Square. So uh, this kernel will really not necessarily add to it. Uh, yeah. Again. So you have to go to the at least the sub algebra. No. Because uh, 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 from the invariance condition, uh, it will be close with respect to the shape, but not close with respect to. Squaring, so it will be not a visible sub algebra. Okay, okay, so in case of sub algebra, it's still yes, okay. so, so squaring is a kind of it's a variable operation that brings you out of the <laughs> thing. Okay. Yeah, again, the the kernel of the form is ideal, 
this lamp is very trivial in the case of characteristic not in total two because yeah we know that the constant is uh, an ideal again in the definition of in characteristic two it will be not the same so constant in the characteristic two is not ideal that's why as a derived this algebra should be defined as a whole you, you, you take all containers and you also take all squares so that's a generalization of the yeah. brain of the brain. And here, like a short proof why uh, it happens in two days. Okay, good. No person. Uh, second level. Now, specific for two districts. So, then uh, any uh, homogeneous form is either. Uh, zero or non degenerate. Let's prove the main theorem now. So let's consider two non invariant symmetric linear forms that is not just denoted only the one and only the two. Uh, the responding gram and this is only D1 and D2. And let us assume that they are homogeneous with respect to parity. If they are not, then we, consider, we can consider uh, all the even cases separate. It's not worth the generality. Now, because it's one very good family of such forms. Uh, because we assume that, uh, yeah, and uh, important to notice that uh, from now on, all the theorems was stated for algebraically closed fields. So, for example, so Z2 will not work. So, only the only finite field. Algebraically closed, as the same holds even in characteristic zero, because you can have a more uh, invariant form, so a real groups. Yeah, so we use the uh, algebraically closeness of the field to show that uh, this polynomial equation has a solution. And then we have uh, the following options. Uh, if parity of two forms is the same, then one is a just scale multiple of another. Uh, if parity is not the same, then uh, we have some non trivial term of this guy and it's an invariant subspace. Uh, invariant subspace because again it follows from the invariance of our bilinear forms. But uh, it's just a subspace, not a proper super subspace. So it lies down so, in a straight way. Consider two symptomatic subspaces in the point. It's a projection on the uh, we take an intersection with a odd and even part, and we take a projection of the kernel on the even and odd part. Now uh, uh, Again, from condition of invariance, these two guys are ad invariant and they now proper super subspaces. And by the previous lemma, they should be either zero or G itself. Okay, so since uh, the form is not zero, uh, V shouldn't be equal to G itself, otherwise. Uh, the form will be zero, so it should be equal to zero. And the opposite holds uh, for W. So W covers all space. What it means? It means that we have some uh, functional between uh, linear map between all the different parts given. Uh, by the following properties. So this kernel will be described in the form just from the elements of the instance. And a bit of computation, this is the uh, idea uh, give you the following result that uh, this linear or linear map behave nicely with respect to the computation. Now, until uh, this point, I wasn't bothering about any characteristics, so this was working for any 
zero to uh, your favorite prime number. Now let's carefully analyze what, what it implies uh, for different keys. So I just repeated it, and uh, you see that if uh, is not equal to two, uh, then left hand left hand side is symmetric, and the right hand side is anti. Uh, why? Because f is all the linear function. So that means uh, you have a contradiction because uh, one is symmetric, one is anti-symmetric. So that means that uh, bracket should be commutative. So our lead surrounder is commutative, but it, it contradicts the assumption that it's simple. Because commutative gets a simple. Now let's consider any yeah, That means that if you have two different uh, nieces with different parties, uh, this couldn't be characteristic uh, not equal to two. So we are done with uh, very complicated proof of the first statement that I show for uh, characteristic not equal to two. But uh, what will it imply for a characteristic input? So, again, uh, when this communication could be reduced to the formal form, and you could probably already recognize some of the formulas that I showed you before. Uh, if I will replace my F by a very distinct parameter, you will observe that it's just a definition. Uh, of, uh, of how you define the clarification of a restricted simple D algebra. So just replace that by E. So remember that uh, we had a radius of even part, then uh, F of uh, E can be odd part, and it exactly give you the modal structure. So you take a break and then uh, change the parity and end. Yeah, you're ready because it holds uh, up space was just taking a, a bracket and forgetting about the part. And yeah, uh, this, uh, this communication procedure from other hand could be described in the following manner. So you just multiply your original uh, X of algebra by some associative uh, community, but not so. So the commutative super algebra span by the unit and one of the elements, then we define a bracket in the form manner. Uh, good. And my binary forms then on such algebra could be defined as well. So if I start with this um, uh, single uh, linear key, uh, it's a relative reason for me to two forms on this clarification of the form. And you can see that this one was this will be all, one another will be just to by the definition of this not at I, F1. So remember that A. A is an old generator of this algebra. Good. Uh, so we proved this theorem for NX. It's not a just a proof, it's also explaining why this kind of phenomenon happens. And now, one a uh, couple of examples that makes uh, things a bit clearer. So I'll show when uh, this group happens, and moreover, if you have such an algebra, yeah. for example, the simple one of the simplest lead super algebras that called uh, ortho or orthogonal, it's it's, it's preserved some bilinear form. So I have to say that it doesn't matter right now. Its commutation relation is given by the following formula. So, uh, underlying guys are odd, and uh, all other guys are even. If you think that it's Schrodinger generators, try to Schrodinger generators. So, it satisfies these uh, uh, commutational rules. 
then uh, this guy uh, satisfies this property. Uh, actually, check it. And um, uh, you will see that also, even by just direct computation, that you will have a, a huge space of um, degenerate symmetric invariant linear form of this case. And uh, these spaces parameterized by the, the, this damage. Because uh, why is it, uh, if you look at this? Because you take the guys for uh, such that they can, we can obtain the security here and uh, everything works. You see that this invariance addition, of course, by the form, doesn't care about squareness. So this is fine. Another example. Uh, let us consider some deformation of this suite's approach. So there is two deformations of this guy, so we should consider the second cohomology of this, this algebra. The joint module, we have uh, two non trivial cycles, and then we deform a bracket in the following manner. So the new bracket is an old bracket linear term given by a cycle, and then probably is a higher order term. Should calculate some C product. In this case, uh, this deforms will be linear. And it's easier, of course, these guys just look at the computation formula to prove that by our criteria that they don't have any non invariant symmetric, non degenerate invariant symmetric forms, just because we know that this does Ah, yes, so that is the infinite only like in the case of yeah. the. Yeah, it's this uh, here and a lemma that is familiar. Yeah. No, that's that are same. So that's the other way. Is it going on in the real time? Exactly, that's the reason, right? Yeah. The system of the. Yeah. Does that mean, does that, if you have G and G, even G, then you have also have? Uh, not necessary. Yes, yeah, so that I ask that not even the only because it's, it's over I and G, not even the only thing. It's, it's only in one direction. Okay. Uh, ne okay. Next. Uh, now, one of the interesting examples that allows you to say something about the structure of this. Uh, let's consider the reification of SL3. It will be some new simple and big super algebra. Uh, it will be a double. Okay. So we will see what SL3 will be uh, nine dimensional. So the clarification will be the half dimension nine. nine. So total dimension 18. Uh, so you have three H's. Three axes, three voids, and the opaque axis. Yes, yes. And the uh, pi means that they give it the one part. So you got two edges on there, okay. Yeah, so it is Chevalier generator, so rank two. Uh -huh. yeah. Rank two, you take the standard Cartan matrix, and this it works. If you're being directly computer compute Caramon, you will have a two cases. Uh, one more. Um, Interesting observation that this cycle is full, so that's why this cycle is. You can compute that paradigm. So it's defining some odd deformation. Uh, so it will be now uh, the corresponding odd deformation will be not just the algebra over a field, but it will be the algebra over a ring of exterior, of some exterior algebra, of some gross model. So let's assign it to the terms. Details. So first, let us consider this uh, deformed with respect to odd cycle. So it will have some odd deformation parameters, and then the direct computation shows that uh, you can consider that you can find a uh, parametric family of uh, bilinear forms in the variant on the generate on uh, this new piece of algebra. So we have these fancy parameters. Uh, your uh, these two forms given by trace 
trace and pre uh, trace these two by linear forms that are given as four and formulas. And uh, yeah, you will ask me now, okay, I promised you that uh, we could have only two parameters, not four. What is happening here? The answer is the following that uh, this algebra should be considered not over built, but uh, it's a free module or over grasp and algebra generated is one called L, as you can see. And in this way, uh, we have only two parameters because we could parameterize this gets with respect to L of the tree. And uh, the trade, we have two parameters now, but not, not from the field anymore, they uh, leave this tree. And uh, okay, we have a two parameter family of uh, linear forms. One is even and as usual. So that means that uh, this information should be verification too. And actually, the same happens in the case of the uh, second information. But here we have just even parameter. We have uh, two forms. One is even and as result. Here is the explicit forms for. Uh, Schwelle generators, and uh, there is one exceptional point for uh, the deformation parameters. Yeah, and I think I will stop here because uh, the categorical part will take some time, uh, more than 10 minutes. <laughs> so. so, but then uh, you promise to say something of the relation, it's an algebraic group, right? Because uh, 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 maybe that's my question. Is there also relation between algebraic group? Uh, yes. Uh, if you have a, uh, if your the algebra is restricted, then it corresponds to some algebraic group. And then, uh, so that's, uh, you cannot integrate in general cases. There's some abstraction, no? Well, uh, I don't know how. If you have a, some non-restricted the algebra, I'm not sure. I don't know the way how you could associate uh, some algebraic group for it. Yeah. It's in one direction. So that's why restricted CI is more important. Yeah. Can we still scheme at least because you have nine exciting pages left? <laughs> ah, but, okay. that's, <laughs> that's actually a proper definition why you can think about how we should see it all different. Yeah, yeah, we still about this. Yeah. Uh, okay, I could give, give a couple of um, words for how this all parameters appear so that nobody knows it yet. So we, we consider some super domain and single So you have a. But just for me, because I already learned something from the library's lecture on super algebra, but he considered over uh, that is a dislection of mm -hmm. over R. So all these cases, you are considering any characteristic, yeah? So some yeah. the same thing and then check yeah. one more yes. thing. So, so that even see infinity, of course, that's a lot smooth, but the smooth is safer. Yeah, but, but it, it's smooth because it, uh, we consider it, uh, some super variable over the point. So the algebra function we use just to exterior algebra of some, yeah, yeah. on some vector bundle over the point, so of some vector space. So. Then we consider all the parameters of this uh, exterior algebra and uh, they look as follows. Just we studied the automorphisms of Grossman. No, no, no. Now I will explain why in supersetting you have more work because there is this nice theorem that says that the, if you consider the category of super manifolds, you consider objects, the object is just manifold plus a vector bundle. But the point that you have in super case much more morphism. And yeah, this slide will explain you why. So now we take some uh, we start working not over the point, but over some uh, over some dimension of dimension n. We have some vector bundle of dimension n over it. And what is the shift of function on it? So there will be some uh, smooth functions uh, as well as the Grassmann algebra. So uh, by definition, any morphisms of two superdimensions will uh, induce the corresponding 
uh, morphism on the corresponding smooth functions. And then we will have, it will be described in the form of that. So if you was only in the, in the setting of classical differential geometry, then this derivative term, uh, the both term, it will not have any sense because you want to uh, add some differential forms to your functions. Of, of course, in differential forms, uh, you can find some odd object, uh, even objects, even degree gains. But uh, you, you're not imposing morphisms that means some degrees. So it's one of the services of now new morphism. So now uh, what we we could do further takes any supercommutative super algebra and consider the following function. So now our uh, uh, function will take values into this supercommutative super algebra and they consider the morphisms and then it will give us extra arguments. And these arguments uh, extra terms in this uh, and the uh, definition of morphism. And uh, this uh, term will have some parameters, and these parameters will be all parameters. And that's what happened in the all deformation. So, just this is the idea that will give you all the parameters of your uh, morphism. And yeah, I think the rest is. So is there a virtual theorem in positive characteristic? Uh, yeah, this, this you could do this. You can go to the super varieties. Yeah. So any any, any super any, any super manifold even in positive characteristics still split? No, no, no. The, the splitness it will be something. Okay. You can have some non split yes. Even non option. Okay, because even in complex case. Not every supermodel splits. Yes, yes, okay, okay. The positive characteristics probably. Yeah. Yes, you can say split. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and three means. So. Yeah. Uh, the rest is just generalization. So, because you want to work uh, in positive characteristics, you should speak about some varieties. Definition, for definition of the super scheme, I will refer to the latest paper from 70s. So, uh, I will stop here. Thank you. So, uh, well, thank you very much, Andre, for uh, your very interesting talk. Uh, I just have the uh, previous question because, uh, as I learned from the latest uh, books, and uh, that is a uh, theory of Sylvia, theory of Sylvia algebra, also in particular, is a uh, Related to simple symmetry physics, right? Uh, there is some connection, uh, so, but not completely. Uh, well, okay, uh, I, I want to say in a forward thing. Yes, it is related, but there is also other connections that, in my opinion, are more important. For example, in super algebras over fields of not fields, but in positive characteristics, was discovered by topologists. Because you, you you take some fundamental group of your logical space, fundamental groups, then take a white hat product, mm -hmm. and this will give you, in most cases, it will be some solvable least super algebra or field of some point. Yeah, that's very really interesting. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the formalism of uh, the super mathematics is much more uh, wider than just a super symmetry in physical terms. I see. So that means that here, uh, has some has a potential application to closing. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's, it's some very natural thing to do. But uh, you have no chance to say, take a closing, yeah? You're only closing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I never thought about it. Okay, yes, that's something that I didn't know, yeah? Something interesting. Yes, thank you very much. And is there uh, at least some more question? In the audience? If there are no more questions, let us see the speaker. Okay.